This is more just like a priming movement. And I kind of think the lat pull over with the, the rope is an extension of a priming movement. So for this, I'm basically just bent over as if I was like, I could row this back if I wanted to, but I'm almost doing this like a pullover and I'm like pulling down, but I'm also then hyper extending my lower back so I'm getting a little bit more erector. So I'm pulling with my lats, tucking my hands, so it's somewhat supinated. I'm pulling my elbows down and back, but I'm also getting some erectors in there. So it's more just like a total back priming movement. I do this at the beginning of the workouts. And the reason I do a band is for accommodating resistance. It starts off easy and potential and then gets harder. So I'm like pulling through increased tension. But it feels really good on my lats and my lower back as like a warm up before we actually get into any of like the heavy rolling or heavy pulling or anything like that. So it's just like a really good priming movement, especially for people with backs that are a little bit less developed. Like I'll say mine, for example, like I need a lot more lat thickness and a lot more lat width. So by priming it, I'm able to get some things activated so that way I can actually feel muscle groups working when I'm actually like pulling and doing my main compound movements. So this is a little bit different movement. Um, so I actually learned this from a buddy of mine, Nick Loff. And so what we're gonna do here, I'm actually pushing up into the pad here with my front foot. I'm gonna grab right here and brace myself and I'm gonna pull myself under. So now I have my obliques and my lat already kind of pre-tensed, pre so there's tension on them. I'm not really too worried about getting going through a huge stretch because I actually don't want my shoulder passing through too much of a range of motion especially with this shoulder being my bad shoulder. My goal is to keep tension on my lat and have only my lat working. So the reason that I'm gonna pull myself under and pull supinated, my goal is I'm trying to stack my wrist and my elbow right in line with my lat. So I'm pulling in one fluid motion. Now, yes, I could sit on this and do a single arm pull down, but then see how I have to pull out at an angle this is now no longer stacked over my elbow and stacked over my lat. Will this work for most people? Sure, but if we can be optimal about something, then why not be optimal about it? So, this is a newer movement for me. I haven't done it for very long, so it's not perfect, but it feels really good. If you have access to a machine like this, I think it's definitely worth a try. So we're just gonna pull straight down. And I'm not worried about going all the way to the point where I get this big stretch at the top and now all of a sudden now my hand goes back to a neutral position. That's not the goal here. I'm trying to stay tucked under. This is as far as I'm gonna let myself up. I'm gonna pull back down. Really hard contraction. Really hard contraction. I'm pulling as far as I can here. Because I wanna make sure I not only, it's not just a, I don't wanna just pull terrace. I wanna make sure that lat actually gets involved. There we go. So like mine, too, because I'm short, I almost touch the pad with my elbow. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. It's like there, I touched it with my elbow. That's as far as I need to go. There. So right now with my training, I'm not doing my normal low volume, high intensity stuff, like keeping reps low, like six to eight, and just like really like focusing on progressive overload. For the next like four weeks or so during my rebound, I'm just gonna be focusing on making sure that my tendons, ligaments, everything get back to normal, probably towards a little bit of health and some, some body care. So I'm doing higher rep ranges, like 12 to 15, not really taking nearly as much to failure, probably like one to two RIR. Um, this is pretty much one of the only times that I'll do RER training also like maybe two weeks out from a show at that point I'll start doing something like that <clears throat> Still challenging Yeah. 
also too, by pulling myself really underneath the bar, I'm taking my obliques out of the movement. So I can't do this and pull with oblique. I'm really locked in. And then I'm just pulling with lat, because your lats and your, and your obliques and your serratus actually are pretty connected and they do a lot of similar things. They help stabilize your spine. sets right now we're just keeping the reps high not trying to do anything crazy I'm purposely trying to keep the load down right now because I'm not as strong as I think I am right now and so I'm not interested in like getting hurt by loading up like four plates on there and trying to shit fuck the row out of it and it just doesn't work and then all of a sudden tearing a lat or whatnot and then like screwing my rebound and then fucking myself for my offseason so nice and easy for the next several weeks it'll yield a much better response So for this movement, I'm keeping my hands neutral, but that doesn't necessarily just make this a lat movement by automatically. Based on where I'm sitting and how I have my butt, this is actually more mid and upper back for me. And that's where my mind is going when I'm pulling. I'm trying to feel my mid and upper back contracting really hard. I'm gonna do this single arm after and then it'll be a lat row. All right, so if your gym has like prime equipment that have you know the, the three prongs where you can load it at like the mid portion range, beginning portion range, end portion range, this is how I like to do it for like my setup. So like mid, middle peg right here is the, the middle range. That would be like any other machine that just has the one, one peg to load weight on. You're gonna feel it pretty much throughout most of the motion. The top one right here, this is actually at the beginning, because when you row, this moves up and it gets past the fulcrum point, and so the weight falls off. You actually don't feel it at the top. So what I like to do is I like to do like a 70-30 split pretty much with load, or approximately like that. I'm not getting out my calculator and actually doing the math. It doesn't matter. And so, so we're just going to keep it, again, still keeping it light, but we're going to throw a little bit more load at the beginning. So what we'll do, what we'll be able to feel is it'll be harder at the beginning now that I'm loading this, this fully stretched portion of the movement. And then as I row back, it actually will fall off and get slightly lighter. So it allows me to get all the way back. If I was to load it on the bottom, it would be there'd be no weight at the at, at the front. I'd be able to do this with absolutely no resistance. But then getting from here to here would be extremely hard because now I have weight that I'm actually pulling through the higher range of motion. So if you have something like that, I think a good 70-30 split, whether you're doing Middle and, middle and end and middle or middle and beginning. That's typically what I, what I think actually works the best and feels the most natural for these types of machines. two in the tank that's not a complete failure but get the job done. all right so we're gonna do the same movement single arm but now it's gonna actually be for lats so I have my same foot forward that I'm pulling with so my left arm forward my left foot forward I'm gonna use my right arm to actually brace against this pad really I'm gonna actually have my forearm on here so I'm gonna have my forearm right here and it's actually you know pretty much my hands gonna rest right here and I'm just gonna tuck this elbow down but I'm still staying locked in with my obliques. I'm not doing this, you know what I mean? I'm not pulling with my obliques. I'm just staying locked in. Neutral grip, if you can supinate, you, you, 
You can if you'd like. So mine's like a half supination. Again, just going as far as I can feel a little bit of a stretch, but I'm not so super worried about getting a huge stretch in this movement. We will do some movements where we get big stretches. I'm trying to keep tension on the lat. I'm driving my elbow down towards my pocket. And finishing strong. We have the weight loaded the exact same 70, 30, mid and fully stretched position. So it's harder at the beginning than it actually is at the end. So my obliques are already firing. It allows me to get all that lat, as well as that little crest that goes all the way down to basically your hip. You can see it a lot more when you're really lean. These are all like newer movements for me, not ones that I have mastered. I threw them in because I knew I had areas that I had to work on. After the regional, I was like, my lats are not where they need to be. What can I do to try and make some improvements quickly in four weeks? Did I expect to grow a bunch of tissue and have this like crazy back development in four weeks? No, but it did make improvements. I evened it out. I had one lat on my left side that always wanted to stay tucked. It would not flare and all of a sudden now, it's a lot more symmetrical and even. So in my, in my eyes, that's progress. Now, a full off season, loading and getting stronger in these movements, I think will yield a lot of, a lot of good results, especially for an area on my physique that needs a lot of work. All right, so for this one, we are focusing on stretch. So as you can see, I'm really bent over. And I'm really letting it pull me over, almost like a turtle shell. So you can see my back is as stretched as I can possibly get. And then I'm trying to pull with as much of my lower back and lat and erector as I can. So I am doing a little bit of a hyper extension, so I'm not as pulled over the, over the pad when I'm rowing. So that's like the difference slightly in this movement versus the prime row, how we were doing it bilaterally. Not to mention too, you're pulling against gravity with this. So 
It's just simply a different feel to the movement when you're doing a pull against gravity versus doing a horizontal pull. <clears throat> All right, so we're gonna finish off the back portion of the workout with an extreme stretch. So basically all we're doing is we're strapped into a lat pull down. I'm just gonna sit into this. I'm not gonna brace against it like this. I'm not gonna try and flex into it. I'm just gonna let it continue to pull me up and just stay strapped in as long as I can. And it's just gonna slowly but surely stretch my lats out and really pull them off my obliques and my serratus. So they can also get stuck down there. The goal for this is just to literally fight the agony and hold it as long as you can. When I used to train DC style, you know, we would usually do an extreme stretch from anywhere from one and a half to two minutes straight. Just hold in there because it takes time for the fascia tissue to actually stretch. So long, deep stretches is actually how you achieve that. So we're just going to sit here and hold this for a while. This definitely can give a stimulus to promote some growth as the stretching is definitely doing some damage to the tissue right now, just like any other exercises would. But from a health standpoint, I actually think that this actually helps keep the muscles healthy. So we're not just continuously contracting movements, we're getting some stretching into our actual routine, building it in, building it in. fighting off adhesions, keeping everything elongated and pro properly aligned. This is how you realign muscle fibers, actually putting it under a stretch. I learned that in about 10 years of physical therapy as a patient, because I used to always get hurt. That's it, only do it once. 